Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome to a new video. So in the last class we had derived uh, the aerodynamic forces uh, that actually matter which would be the uh, pressure forces and shear forces. We computed them in a chord based coordinate system and uh, in the video before that we learned how we can actually convert results from one coordinate system to another coordinate system. Uh, primarily how you would transform vectors from one system to another system. Now that we have done that we should probably talk about fluid flow regimes because if you're interested in aerodynamics you should understand the key differences between inviscid flow and viscous flow. If you had watched the previous example where I talked about a boundary layer and how the effects of viscosity is very important that's what you would call as a viscous flow and if you want to take the simple approach here and uh, if you feel like you want to get into aerodynamics then purely focus on viscous flows. Um, there is going to be very rare cases where uh, viscosity is not going to be uh, playing a major role. And then the next thing is compressibility effects. Uh, so what I mean by that is fluid has a particular density, correct? And uh, when you say that density is constant, that's what you call as an incompressible flow. And when density changes, that's called as a compressible flow. Now, when you're starting from the governing equations, right, the Navier-Stokes equations, depending upon the choice that you make, you will end up with different equations, okay? Uh, for example, if you have taken a class on thermodynamics, you might have studied something called as the uh, steady flow energy equation, right? Which you would essentially get by assuming compressibility, meaning you would assume that the flow is compressible and you would end up with such an equation. So we say that the fluid is incompressible when its density is not changing. And uh, uh, if you have taken any thermodynamics course or fluid dynamics course, based upon incompressible flows, uh, you know, you can figure out the relationship between pressure gradient and velocity, correct? And similarly, if the flow is compressible, uh, you can get another set of governing equations, correct? One is going to be compressible and the other is going to be incompressible. But which is going to be correct? Well, it turns out that the correctness depends upon the speed of sound, right? Uh, so speed of sound is uh, calculated by square root of gamma RT for uh, gases, right, and for fluids. So what I've done here is I have essentially used uh, the modified uh, steady uh, flow energy equation, right? And uh, you might have seen an expression uh, like this one plus, uh, you know, gamma minus one by two. Uh, multiplied by Mach number square whole power 1 divided by uh, gamma minus 1, right? Uh, pretty sure you have studied an expression like this. Um, if, if you do not uh, refer to any standard gas dynamics textbook and you will be able to find that information. So what I've done here is in Excel for the density ratio, right? Uh, for the upstream and the downstream density ratio, uh, what I'm basically doing is uh, for different Mach numbers, I'm looking at the density ratio. So when the Mach number is really, really small, you can see that uh, density really doesn't change. But when Mach number increases, right, this is essentially steady flow energy equation, guys, meaning um, fluid is actually moving. It's an open system. If you do an energy balance uh, where you would compute the energy entering into the system versus energy leaving the system, you would get this equation. Okay. What I'm looking at is the density ratio. So if the density ratio is one, that means the densities are same. In other words, for that Mach number, you can actually use incompressible uh, flow equations. But you can see that when the Mach number uh, keeps on uh, increasing, uh, right around 0 0.3 is where the difference or the ratio is 1.048. So if the ratio is 1.048, that means that the outflow density is 5% more, right? And this is where engineers agree that we should switch to compressible flow equations. And why are we deciding 5%? Well, 5% is, it's not an analytical number. It's just uh, whenever you perform engineering, uh, if the error is less than 5%, people are generally okay with it, right? Um, that's how the 5% is chosen. If we are living in a different universe where 10% is okay, then we would basically say that, see, if the Mach number is greater than 0 0.43, uh, use the compressible flow solver. So, but in the current world that we are in, 5% uh, error rate is generally what you would see engineers are okay with and uh, for that 5% change the Mach number uh, corresponds to uh, 0.31 so that's why you will see that people say that if na Mach number is greater than or equal to 0.3 it's always better to uh, start using compressibility right that being said in general if you're dealing with gas I would say just 
straight up use compressible flow equations that way you don't have to worry about this problem at all okay all right so with that i would like to come to the final slide of the presentation where we are ready to define what aerodynamics is essentially aerodynamics is the study of how air flows and interacts with objects that's it the object can be a passenger car it can be an electric vehicle it can be a fighter plane it can be a drone right doesn't really matter and aerodynamics as we discussed so far it's all about resolving two forces it's all about getting the pressure force and the shear force and in order to do that correctly you need to make sure that viscous effects are taken into account and you always use compressible flow equations if you are studying about aerodynamics remember these rules so that you won't make mistakes when you are starting to work on large aerodynamics based projects thank you so much for watching i will see you guys in the next one bye